that scripture in John. John chapter 3, find John chapter 3, then find Matthew chapter 5, then Psalms 127. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that was in, within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Church, are you ready for a word? Are you really ready for a word? Don't get tired on me now. So John chapter 3. Put my glasses out. Is it up there on the, screen, on the screen? John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest Accept. Somebody say accept. That's going to be our key word throughout everything we say today. But no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus said, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Barely, barely, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Go over to Matthew chapter 5. Look at verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness should see the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you should not in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Find Psalms 127. Psalms 127. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Psalm 127, just that one verse. Except the Lord builds the house. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked but in vain. Amen. Now, Elijah, bring that title up. Church, I want to take my time and do this good. No, 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 the, the, the title, that, that's one of the things. The title, I'm not sure you put the title in there. The title is, Accept You Accept the Exception. Accept You Accept the Exception. And Jesus is the exception. Y'all with me now? It's going to be a little deep. Amen. Hallelujah. Accept You Accept the Exception. And Jesus is the exception. We live in a world that is full of absolutes. Amen? Full of absolutes. What goes up must come down. Amen? After the rain, the sun will surely shine again. Amen? That's an absolute. Hallelujah. One plus one will always equal two. Absolutes. Amen? If a young girl keep having unprotected sex, she will surely get pregnant. Amen. Absolute. You play with fire, you will surely get what? Burn. burn. Call fire burn. Amen. Just as there are absolutes in this world, there are exceptions. Amen. There are exceptions. A man cannot hear except his ears be opened. Amen. A man cannot physically see except his eyes be opened. He certainly cannot walk except he has legs or some kind of apparatus to enable him to walk. Some people say there are exceptions to every rule. So in this world, in this world, you don't have to accept everything, but there are some things that you're going to have to accept. You're going to have to accept it because you can't do anything about it. Amen? There are some things that you, you don't have to accept everything, but there's something you have to accept because you cannot do anything about it. 
So it's in other words, either God ordered it or God allowed it because of his divine plan. Amen? Because he's always in control. Whether you agree with it or not, we as believers have to accept what comes from God. Amen? Have to accept what comes from God. So accept you, accept the exception. I want to give you three points, three points. And the first point, I'm going to tell you all three of them, then we're going to go one, one by one. The first point is that God sets and sends the exception. God sets and sends the exception. The second point is that Nicodemus encounters the exception. Third point is Jesus is the exception and not the deception. That Jesus is the exception and not the deception. We're going to see that Jesus speak over 18 times, uses the word accept over 18 times in his discourse. The word accept means through Webster. Webster said accept means a person or thing that, that is excluded from a general statement, it does not follow a rule. That was Webster said. But in the Greek, it simply means if not, but, or unless. If not, but, or unless. If it not had been for Lord on my side, unless God step in. Amen? Unless God step in. So God sets and sends the exception. And we see it right off, we see it right off the bat, after he make man, after he put Adam and Eve in the garden. He tell Adam and Eve, you can eat of all these trees, any tree you want, except, but the tree of good and evil. Right, that's what it says. Eat of any tree of good and evil, unless you will surely die. In other words, God let you know right off the bat, there are some things, there are some things in this world that, you cannot touch some things in the world you just cannot touch or, or consider. He sets the exception for his believers. Amen? God let man know right off the bat. So there are some things in this world that you're going to have to accept the exception. The world may go after it, but you as a child of God, you are an exception. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me give you, let me give you some things on that. First of all, we, we see it in Genesis 3. I mean, Genesis 32, verse 26, when, when uh, Jacob is wrestling with the angel all night long. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Amen? But, but how, how do we say? Do we have, I, do, I, I, don't know, I don't know if I gave you that one. He said, I'm not going to let you go except you bless me. That's what he tells the angel. I'm not going to let you go except you bless me. Now, you don't have these scriptures, but I'm just going to run through it. So, so other words, God sets and sends the exception. You, you remember Joseph? Joseph and his brothers, they, they put him in the pit. They, they, they put him in the pit. He went from the pit to Potiphar house, to prison, to the palace. But now he's the prince of Egypt. And there's a phantom in the land. There's a phantom in the land, and, and they need food. And Abraham tells his, 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 his son to, to go into Egypt. Go, 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 go into Egypt. Go, go to Egypt and, 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 and buy food. And they don't know that it is Joseph. It is Joseph that is the prince of Egypt. He says that I'm not going to do anything except you bring your little brother Benjamin. Remember that? Except you bring your brother Benjamin. Amen. So God sets and sends the exception that the kings and prophets live by the exception. Amen. You follow me so far? Remember Esther? Esther? When, when, when Mordecai said, go into the king, go into the king and, you know, and, and, and make a plea, he said, no, he, he, Mordecai don't work like that. I can't go into the king except the king, except the king delights in me. He got to accept the exception. The prophet and, and, and king live by the exception. Amen? Let me give you one more. Nezuchadnezzar, oh, oh, this one, bring this one. I think you got this one. But anyway, this, this really blessed me. Because remember, they had to bow. They had to bow to Nebuchadnezzar God. But as he brought him out to prayer, this is what Nebuchadnezzar said. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him and had changed the king's words, changed the king's words, and yield their bodies that they might not serve 
nor worship any God what? Except. Hallelujah. Except. Amen. Their God. Hallelujah. So the kings and prophets, they have to live, live by the exception. Am I back here? No, I'm not back here. Amen. Hallelujah. And those that marry, I just want to drop this one on you. Amos 3 and 3 says, how can they walk together except they agree? Amen? How can you walk together except you agree? You got to accept the exception. Hallelujah. A godly foundation is built on exceptions. And we see it right there in that Psalm 27, King David. Except the Lord builds the house. Except the Lord build how they that labor, labor in vain. Amen. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watch in vain. I don't care how many bricks you lay, no matter what cement you use on the foundation, no matter what security system, no matter the material that's installed on the roof, except the Lord builds the house. Amen. Jack Hayford has this book bringing glory on your house. Glory on your house. Amen. It's a good book. And it said, no matter, it said, except the Lord keeps the city. In other words, no matter how many law enforcement, law, law officers on, on the force, amen, no matter how many national guards, no matter who the governor is, except the Lord keeps the city. Amen? The man that watch you watch in vain. So in other words, some trust in horses, some trust in chariot, but I trust in the name of the Lord. Amen? So God sets and sends the exception. Let me give you one more. We, we, remember, remember King Hezekiah? The Lord said it. The Lord sent the prophet to tell King Hezekiah today, you're going to surely die. King Hezekiah turned to the wall. He prayed, and the Lord told the prophet to go back and tell King that God, words, God made an exception for him. Tell the king he won't give him 15 more years. God made an exception for him, amen, because he was surely supposed to die. Hallelujah. Are you with me so far? So, in other words, have you ever been in a situation and there was no way out? You've been sitting and there was no way, no way, no way out, and God sends an exception for you. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in a situation and the rule of the law said one thing, but they made an exception for you? Amen. That God sent the exception. I, I know what happened to, to me. I, my, my first house, my first house was the exception. Because my credit score said, no way you can afford a $100,000 house. That's what my credit score said. But God made an exception. My first job, I'm not going to go to the whole story, but my first job was a blessed job. Now, I got it at 20 years old. It, 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 that's the point of the application says, have you ever been arrested? My juvenile record say, you can't get that job. So I lied on the application. I lied and I, I, I say no, but they found out, Pastor. This is the greatest job in St. Louis. You work for a defense company. My, my juvenile director said, no way you're going to work for this defense company. I started, I worked 30 days. They walked me out of that place because they found out I lied on the application. I was sad. I was embarrassed. But God made an exception. Without going the whole story, God made an exception. I got back in there in five days. I worked over 22 years that God would make an exception no matter what the rule said. Hallelujah. Has God made an exception for you? Accept you, accept the exception. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I just have to tell you this. God, a God sent exception is like getting an unexpected check in the mail. Isn't that good? A God sent exception is like getting an unexpected check in the mail. Amen. <laughs> Praise his name. Amen. Did I give you this one? Uh, Elijah John chapter 3, verse 27. It said, a man, this is John the Baptist. When Jesus is baptized and they go to John, they say, hey, he's over there baptizing. Jesus said that John baptized, no, he's with us. Say, he's with, he's, okay, he's with us. But, but John says something in verse 27. He said, man can receive nothing except, except it be sent from heaven. Amen. A man can receive nothing except it be sent from heaven. Talking about Jesus, amen. That Jesus sit from heaven. A Annie Graham Lott, anybody know An uh, uh, Annie Graham Lott? That, that, that's Billy Graham's daughter. She has this book called Just Give Me Jesus. In the book, he said, I'd rather have Jesus 
then all the world has to give. Just give me Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Just give me Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than riches and fame. I'd rather have Jesus than a good name. I'd rather have Jesus. Jesus said, you belong, if you belong to Jesus, you are part of the exception. You hear me? You belong to Jesus and you are part of the exception. I'd rather have Jesus because Jesus has been sent from God. Amen. Jesus has been sent from God. It's that man can receive nothing, nothing, except is sent from heaven. Hallelujah. In other words, nothing of value. Nothing of value. Nothing of kingdom value. Nothing, nothing of, of true worth unless it's sent from God. Amen. Nothing of, of, of purpose for the purpose of the kingdom unless it's sent from God. Except it's sent. So let me get to the next point. Nicodemus encounters the exception. Nicodemus encountered the exception. So, uh, so I don't know, but Nicodemus, Nicodemus had three encounters, three recorded in the Bible, three recorded encounters with Jesus. His name is mentioned four times in the words of God, but three recorded encounters. His encounter is initiated because Jesus is the exception to the law. Amen. He's a self. He's inside. I didn't come to abolish the law. I come to fulfill the, fulfill the law. But they feel that he is the exception to the law. Amen. Exception to the law of man. He is the fulfillment of God's law. He is the fulfillment of God's law, and he is the exception to every earthly law. You hear me? He's the fulfillment of God's law and the exception of every earthly law. Oh, you you know you understand what I'm saying. Oh, well, I'm saying that the law of gravity says said that, that, what, that what goes up must come down, but, but the, for Jesus' exception to the law that he ascended to heaven. Amen? He ascended to heaven without a parachute or a jet pack, didn't he? Amen? So, so, so he exception to the, to the law, eh, the earthly law. It said that he will, be, he will descend from heaven and he won't come with a parachute. Amen? Are you with me? He's the exception to the law. He's the exception to the law of barriers. Amen? That he would walk through a wall to prove that to prove that he's alive. A, a man that he did to, to Thomas. You remember Thomas, man? It said it said that the doors were shut, and Jesus shows up. Amen. So he's an exception to barriers. He's an exception to the law, the law of death in the grave. Amen. That he did get out in the tomb is empty. Amen. He's an exception. He's an exception to the law of birth. Amen. Because the world says that it takes a a man's sperm and a woman's egg. But he was born of a virgin. Amen. He's an exception. So Nicodemus encounters the exception. The exception. The exception is because everything he has learned. Exception to everything that Nicodemus has learned. Here comes the exception. Amen. Yeah, keep walking. Watch my glasses. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me so far? So, so the first thing, Nicodemus ponders the exceptions, he brings questions. He ponders the exception, he brings questions. And we see it in John 3, 2. He said, we know that you are a teacher that comes from God, that no man can do these miracles except God be with him, except God be with him, that you can do nothing of kingdom value except God be with you. Only supernatural things are done when God is with you. Amen? When God is with you, you can do the supernatural. Amen? I can do all things through Christ because God is with me. Amen? I'm nothing without the Lord. I have no purpose without him. Amen? So we know that God is with Jesus. Amen? It, it says, except a man be born again, he cannot see. The word see here, it, it, the word see, in fact, is mentioned over 1,619 times in the Bible. But, but, this, this, but this sea is not the visual sea. You say you cannot see the kingdom. It's not a visual sea. It, uh, it means that you cannot comprehend or perceive. That's what this sea is. You cannot see the kingdom. You, cannot, you can't un understand godly things. You can't uh, 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 comprehend the miracles and the mysteries of God. Amen. That's what it's saying. You cannot see the kingdom. Bless his name. Uh, well, again, you can't understand the things of God. You cannot perceive. You have no clues or knowledge of kingdom business. You cannot realize that the kingdom, kingdom is at hand. 
He said, repent for the kingdom is at hand, that the kingdom of God was at hand. It was standing right in front of Nicodemus. Amen. I love it. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Oh, that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Amen. Oh, that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Except you be born again and again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Then you come, except a man be born of water in the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He talked about being baptized. It's not that baptism saves you. Baptism doesn't save you. But what it's saying, if you cannot be immersed, you got to be immersed in this thing. Amen. You have to be immersed in the word of God. Amen. And, and, and immersed in, 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 the, in the mysteries and the goodness of God. Amen. You have to be resurrected in Christ. You got to die of the old self. Amen. That was being baptized. Die of the old man and raised up in the new man in Christ. Amen. And then it says to born of the Spirit. Talk about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Anybody here got the Holy Ghost? Anybody here indwell with the Spirit? Except he's been born of water. In the spirit. Again, baptized, baptized, being baptized doesn't save you. Amen. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I remember back in the old church, people say, I'm, I'm prior baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm running for my life. Prior baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm running for my life. I said, What does that mean? What are they running for? Amen. But you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless his name. In other words, he cannot dwell with God, okay? He cannot come into the kingdom, amen, unless he's filled with the blessed he's been born again, amen? He cannot have no part of deception. He cannot have peace with God until he's been born again, amen? I, I love in Romans 5, it says, now you've been justified by faith. You have peace with God. He cannot see or operate in the spirit realm, Unless his eyes have been opened, amen, and see the goodness of God. Hallelujah. In other words, he or she will always be carnal. You will always be carnal because you can't see spiritual things. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his name. I wish I had my other glasses up here. Boy, look at my jacket. See my other glasses in here. These ones. In other words, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. Amen. So when Jesus come on the scene, he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He cannot see that the kingdom is right in front of him. Amen? In other words, it's not about you. It's about the kingdom. You hear me? It's not about you. It's about the kingdom. It's not about your little stuff. It's about the kingdom. It's not about the king. It's not about, it's about the king and the kingdom. Amen? It's not in the inside pocket. It's about the king and the kingdom. So, so, so these things are, they're, they're troubling to Nicodemus. They're troubling to Nicodemus, Nicodemus because Nicodemus is a Pharisee. He's a ruler of the Jews. It goes against everything in his natural understanding. Otherwise, it goes against his logic. Amen? You cannot bring logic with Jesus. Amen? You can't approach logic with Jesus. Can, can you imagine the disciple says, when he's trying to feed the 5,000, say, Jesus, the logical thing to do is get a caterer. But they didn't know that was a little boy was five, five fish and two loaves. Amen. That's the logical thing. Get, feed, feed, feed them, break them out and feed them day by day or something. That's the logical thing. He said, hey, Jesus, if you come with, with Jesus, Jesus, we, we, we're on the move. We can't go by Jarvis' house. The logical thing is to get a doctor, send the doctor over there and we can continue to go. But now Jesus is a great physician. You can't approach Jesus with your logic. So, so all his logic is thrown out the window when he approached Jesus. Jesus, he encounters deception. Is it making sense to you guys? Hallelujah. The Nick is, Nick and Nicodemus is a Pharisee. Uh, Let me give you one more thing about the logical thing. Jesus, well, Jesus, the logical thing is to, to avoid Jerusalem altogether. You won't have to go to the cross. That's the logical thing. But they didn't know that he had to go to the cross. So we, took, that we said, I must go through Samaria. Amen. But it's said the logical thing was Jesus just avoided it altogether. So Nicodemus is a Pharisee. He, he followed the rule of the law, and, and he's confused. Now he's confused. Remember, Paul, he was a Pharisee. He thought he was doing God's business when he was killing the Christians. Amen. But God has to open his eyes. He has to close them first and reset his eyes. Amen. You cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. 
Amen. His eyes was opened again to kingdom things. He couldn't see kingdom business. This is troubling for Nicodemus. It's troubling. He's a Pharisee. They pride themselves on, on knowing and the knowing and the teaching of the things of God. They were always looking for and expecting the Messiah. They had no problem with the resurrection. But he's troubled now. He, he, he's troubled. They assumed that they were included in God's kingdom work, that they was connected, he was connected to the scribes, that they studied the law inside and out. And here it is, the exception shows up. The exception shows up and turned his whole world upside down. He encounters the exception. John 3, verse 10, 12, and here, here Jesus comes. Jesus hit him upside the head with this one. And then you got that 3, 10, 12. It says, Aren't you a master of Israel and knowest not these things? So you are, and he answered and said, Aren't you a master of Israel and know not these things? Brother Brian said unto thee, We, I love that point, say, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. Jesus, Jesus talking to, is it just Jesus? Who, who is the we? Who is the we? The Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He said, you, you, you are master of Israel, and you know not these things. Well, y'all with me? So y'all, 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 I just want to make sure y'all with me now. So who is the we? It's the Trinity, amen? In other words, I want to talk to you as children of God. How can you call yourself a child of God and know it's not the basic things of God? This for you now. How can you call yourself a child of God and know not the basic thing that a man can't serve two masters? Amen? That man can't live by bread alone. How do you not know the basic, that, that, that love not the world, these are the things in the world, the basic things of God? Know not these things, children of God, that, that husband love your wives and wives submit yourself unto your own husband. How can you call yourself a child of God and know not these things? That love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. How can you not realize that we serve a God that is, that is sovereign? Sovereign. He exalts and he takes down. Amen. He's sovereign. So let me give you Nicholas. That was his first encounter. He brought questions. His second encounter is not direct, but in defense of Jesus. In other words, he takes upon himself and acts as Jesus' pretrial lawyer, as if Jesus needs a lawyer. You'll see it in a minute. He takes upon himself and acts as Jesus' pretrial lawyer. It's in John chapter 1. So now Nicodemus reason for Jesus, and he brings the law. In John chapter 7, rather. If you read John chapter 7, you read John chapter 7, it, it, it's just so wonderful. I wish I could preach that whole thing. In John chapter 7, it starts out that the Jews sought to kill Jesus. In other words, to me, to me, when I read that, and I think about this exception, that, that you either going to, Embrace the exception or you want to kill the exception because you don't like change. Amen? That makes sense? But it says that they sought to kill Jesus in John chapter 7, verse 1. If we get a chance, go, 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 go and read John chapter 7. In verse 7, it says that the world, the world hates him because he testified of the evils in the world. In verse 12 in John chapter 7, it said that the people murmured that he was a good man, others that he deceived the people. Verse 15 and 7 says, how is, it, how is it that he know the law and never learned, that they never seen him in school? In verse 16, it said, his doctrine is not, it, it says, now Jesus tells him that his doctrine is not his, but, but it's one, one that sent him. In verse 20, it said that they said that Jesus got a devil in him. He, he has a devil because, because they wanted to kill him. In verse 26, it says, do, do the rulers know that this is the very Christ? This is John chapter 7, trying to get to he acting like this pre-trial lawyer. In verse 43, he says that, that, that so there was division, division amongst the people because of Jesus. Amen? Verse 46, he said that never a man spoke like him. In fact, they, they, they sent him to get Jesus, but, but, but he said, why didn't you bring him back? He said, because we never heard a man to speak like that. That's why we didn't bring him. We couldn't, they couldn't lay hands on him because we never heard a person speak like that. 
In verse 37, Jesus said, if any man thirst come after me. But it's in verse 50 and 51 that he acts as Jesus' pretrial lawyer. So he wanted to kill him. You got it. Nic Nicodemus says up, up to the, uh, uh, where they, they, they back with, uh, with all the scribes and Pharisees and say, why you, why, why you couldn't bring Jesus to us? Because no man spoke like this. And so Nicodemus stands up in Jesus' defense. Nic Nicodemus said unto them that he that with Jesus by night, bring, bring, bring me the next scripture. Do our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he's doing? Amen. What's the next one say? And they answered and said unto him, Art thou also from Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee arise no prophet. But, but, but Nicodemus stands in defense of Jesus. Amen? He stands in defense of Jesus. He brings the law. So first thing, time he brings questions. Next time he brings the law. And here's the third encounter. Let me get you the third encounter. He encounters the exception. Nicodemus encounters the exception. Amen. John 19, verse 38 through 40. So Nicodemus accepts the exception, and he brings an offering now. First, he brings questions. He brings questions, he brings the law. Now he brings an offering, amen, because Jesus had been crucified. He's on the cross now. Joseph Ar Ar Arimathea comes to bring him, to get him off the cross. says, and after this, Joseph Ar Arimathea being disciple of Jesus, but what? How many secret Christians we got in here? How many secret Christians? He said, in secret. Are you a secret Christian? He brings them in secret. What? Because of the fear of what others are going to think. Amen? We saw Pilate. We saw Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. And he came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus next. And that came who? That came who? Nicodemus. There come Nicodemus, which at the first time came by night and brought mixtures of mirth and also about uh, 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 and, and, and allies of about a hundred pound weight. If they're an encounter, he brings an offering. He brings an offering. So you, you can say that Nicodemus now he embraces deception. Amen. He embraced deception. First, first he came with questions in secret. Second, in, in the mid in midday, in midday that that he, he's openly openly that 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 he's that he's trying to defend them, and sent semi openly, and here now he's totally in the open that that he's coming to bury Jesus. Amen. He's coming to bury Jesus. <laughs> Everyone can't handle the exception. Can you handle the exception that Jesus is the exception? Everyone can't handle the exception. Most people want to be. In the, in, with the in crowd. That's where you at, that you want to be part of the in crowd. But we are an exception to the in crowd. Amen. We are an exception to the world. Amen. Remember that. Don't forget that. Don't get caught up in this world. Remember that you are an exception. You can't do what everybody else do in the world. Amen. Can't get caught up. Hallelujah. Can I preach, guys? Somebody say preach, man. Man, I wish these glasses would be there for me. Boy, are you sure they're not in there? My inside pocket. They got it. These glasses are not working for me. Anyway. They're all fogging up. Amen. So everyone can't handle the exception. Amen. Instead of sitting at the feet of Jesus and the other disciples, Nicodemus chooses to worship Jesus from afar. Amen. Over a three-year period, he had an opportunity to get closer to Jesus. So in other words, how long is it going to take you to get closer to Jesus? When you encounter the exception to the rule, your thinking must change. Amen? When you encounter the exception, your thinking must change. When you encounter the exception, your direction will surely change. Amen? Nicodemus came. He came with him first by night. And now he's in the open. It said that he brought a 100-pound weight of myrrh. And, and fragrances. Amen. And, and I, I thought about that. Why? Because everything in the Bible, Bible is there for a purpose. It's there for a purpose. So I wonder, why do they want to put the how much everything weighs? So, 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 so I thought about it this way, that, that 
that maybe the weight represents his anguish. The weight of his anguish, the weight of his anguish, he's still trying to understand the concept of being born again. He's still trying to understand that maybe it, it says the weight because he, he's still wrestling, he's wrestling. He have questions, unanswered questions for Jesus, amen? Maybe the, the weight represents the burden for being part of the group that, that orders the death of Jesus. Maybe the, the weight represents Nicodemus' cross, that, that everybody got to carry a cross, amen? That he had to carry Jesus from the cross, off the cross, amen, down Bill De La Rosa. Maybe the weight represents how much he loved Jesus, the, the worth and the, and the wealth of Jesus, amen? So he comes and he asks questions and he, he brings the law and now he brings the offering. But let me switch and get closer to our closing. That Jesus is the exception and not the deception. Amen. Jesus is the exception, not the deception. Jesus is the exception to everything you think you know. Amen. Mary's baby, I'm talking about Mary's baby. I'm talking about Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the Christmas child, is the exception. The exception. He's the exception to every rule, amen? To every earthly rule, amen? He's the exception to every man that, that there's none like him, that, that would never be one likened unto him. He is the exception. He's not an alien. He was both God and man. He's the exception, amen? As the baby, he was what the Roman Catholic called the, the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception. And, 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 and what you got to understand, I'm going to bring you a message that, that you are the exceptional conception. You, a child of God, are the exceptional conception. Amen? Bless his name. He is the exception. He conceived by a virgin girl. Through the overshadowing of the spirit, he, leaves, he lived a sinless life. He's the exception, amen? The exception. <sighs> Some say he came, you, you read it. Some say he come to deceive the people. Some still say he's trying to deceive. But I tell you, people are still getting saved by the name of Jesus, amen? People are still being saved under the name of Jesus. Oh, he's not a deception. People are still being saved from the wrath of God, Amen? I'm a living witness that he's the exception. Amen. He made the exception for me. Amen. I should have been dead and gone, sleeping in my grave, but he made the exception. So 18 times, 18 times, I'm not going to give you all of them, 18 times, Jesus mentioned the word exception. And I put them in this way. There's exception pertaining to entering the kingdom. There's perception pertaining to entering the law. There's an exception pertaining to the relationship with him. And there's, again, the, so the perception entering the kingdom. He says it right there in 520, except your righteousness as seed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you should in no case enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 18 and 3 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be converted and be as come as one of these children, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Matthew 24 verse 22 says, and, and except those days should be shortened, this is 24 talking about end times, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days have been shortened. That, that the devil time is short. Amen. We are in the last days. Amen. And we read John 3 and 3 and John 3, 5. Luke, Luke, Luke 13, 3 says this. I tell you, nay, but except you repent. Except you repent. Amen. Except you repent, you should be likewise perish. You should likewise perish. Luke 13, 5. I tell you. Nay, but the same thing, except you repent, just likewise perish. John, now Matthew 19, 9, this pertains to the law. So whosoever put away his wife, except for fornication, should, and marry again, could be committed adultery. I'm talking about everything that Jesus said, except, amen. Matthew 12, 29, but it's Matthew 12, 29, or, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and the spoils are good, except he first binds the strong man. Amen? But let's go now to the relationship. We'll wrap this thing up. Except you accept the perception. The exception. The exception pertains to relationship with Jesus. It's in Matthew 26, verse 42. It says, we went away again the second time and prayed, saying, no, he went away. He went away the second time and prayed, saying, oh, Father, if this cup may not pass, 
if, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, that will be done. That Jesus accept the exception. Amen. I love that. Amen. John 4, 48. Then said Jesus unto them, except you see signs of one, that's what you, you would not believe. But there's no other sign except the sign of Jonah. Amen. Jesus is the exception. It says in verse 6, chapter 44, that no man can come to me except the Father sends him. That no man can come except the Father sends him. Jesus is the exception. Brother, brother, I say unto you, except you eat of my flesh and, and drink of my blood, you have no life in me. He ain't talking about the, the eat the flesh. He's talking about except you take these words of God. That he is the word of God. Amen? You know, Except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Except you be covered by the blood. Amen. Except you understand that he is the bread of life. Amen. He is the exception. That Jesus is the exception. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just go ahead and wrap this up. Did I bore you all? Huh? You sure? And Jesus said, therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me except we're given unto me by the Father. Amen. How do I close this? Mm, bless his name. John 15, 4. No. John 12, 24. Brother, brother, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it will abide, abide alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. This is all Jesus except. Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except is abide in the vine. And no one, and no more can it accept you abide in me. That you cannot bear fruit unless you abide in Christ. Amen. That you abide in the exception. I love it that when, when Paul is on the ship, and the ship is about being shipwrecked. In fact, they do get shipwrecked, and they get into the water. And he tells the soldiers, because he's on the way to Rome, he tells the soldiers, he says, Except they abide in the ship, they will not be saved. Except you abide in Christ, trouble is coming. Amen? The trouble of the world is, 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 is getting darker and darker. But you got to accept the exception and keep your eyes on Jesus. Because he is the exception. Amen? Except you accept the exception. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But I know that we are exceptional and that God is going to make an exception for you. He already has. Amen. He has given you a home over in glory. Amen. This earth is not your home. Don't get caught up in the affairs of this world. Amen. We don't know what the future is going to hold, but we know who holds the future. Amen. And the future is held by who? King Jesus. He is the deception. He is the deception and not a deception. The world is getting closer and closer. I mean, darker and darker and trying to pull you away from Christ as much as possible, trying to remove God from everything, the true and living God. But you are the exception. Amen. 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 Give God glory. Amen. Amen. Give God glory. Accept you accept the exception. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for coming, oh, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for dying on that cross for us, oh, Lord. Washing away our sins. Thank you, Lord, that you have made a way out of no way, oh, Lord. Thank you for salvation today. Thank you for eternal life. We give you praise. We give you glory. Now, if you're here, if you never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. The opportunity to know how exceptional you are. Because Jesus had made a way for you. He made a way for you. So if you never accepted Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior, will you say, Lord, save me? That I want to be saved? Amen. Bless his name, church. Thank you, Lord.